Today's lesson is on compound interest. We have already studied simple interest, but I wanted to remind you that simple interest is interest calculated only on the principal. And it's only calculated once at the end of each pe time period. That's the kind of interest we've already talked about. Today we're going to be talking about compound interest, which is interest computed on the original principal as well as any on accumulated interest. For example, let's assume your bank calculated interest at the end of each year. If you deposited $1,000 in your bank and accrue $50 of interest at the, en at the rate of 5% at the end of the one year, then you will have $1,050, right? So you have the $1,000 that you had from the principal, plus you had the interest, and then let's say you leave that interest in your account for another year. Then at the interest at the end of the second year, well, if using simple interest, now we're using the same simple interest formula we used in the pre previous uh, lesson, and my principal is now $1,050, not $1,000, because I've already accrued that interest. So if I take this out and I use my calculator and multiply 10 1050 times the quantity 1 plus rate, which is for another 0.05 times time, which is another, another year, so this is at the end of the second year. I work that out and I get 1102.50. One, okay, so this second amount is compound interest because during the second year you're getting interest on the interest that you earned the first year as well as the principal. So simple interest only works when you calculate it once at the end. If you're going to calculate interest and then roll that back into the account periodically, that's when we use compound interest. So the next term you need to know is compounding period, which is the period of time between two interest payments. We use the letter N to denote the number of interest payments each year. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing it's because of the number of interest payments. That's why we use N. So here's a couple different possibilities. If we say compounding annually, that means only once a year. Now, N says how many per year? Well, if it's only once per year, N is one. What if it says compounding semi-annually? Well, that means every six months or twice a year. So therefore, n is 2. If it says compounding quarterly, that means every three months or four times a year, which n is then 4. If it says compounding monthly, that means 12 times a year, so therefore n is 12. Okay. Notice that each of these is going to uh, multiply up to 12. 6 times 2 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, 12 times 1 is 12. And then we still have our values from before. A is still future value, P is still present value, R is still the interest rate, T is still time in years, and now N is the number of interest payments in one year, which is what we just talked about for the compounding period. We have a new formula for compound interest. If you deposit P dollars at the rate R in decimal form, subject to compound interest paid n times a year, then the amount of money A will be in the account after t years is given by these formulas. The first formula, we have A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT. That means that you're going to keep your money in the bank account for the entire um, t time and every time that you get interest is going to roll back into the account. We would use this first formula if you're solving for future value. Or if you need to know how much your money you're going to need in the future, okay? Because it solves for A. The second formula is essentially the same as the first formula, but solved for a different letter, solve for P. So we did some algebra, divide, and you don't really need to know how you got from one to the other, but you need to know that they're basically the same thing, but you would use the second formula if you're solving for present value. 
or like if you need to know how much to deposit now so that your bank account will have a specific amount in the future. Like if you're saving up for something and you want to use your interest to help you get there. So for our first example, we have a sum of $10,000 and it's being invested at an annual rate of 8%. Find the balance of the account after five years subject to, and then for part A, we're gonna do quarterly compounding. And then for part B, we're gonna do the same numbers except for monthly compounding. So the letters involved are A, P, R, N, and T. So as long as we have four out of the five letters, we can solve for pretty much any of these. So um, it says a sum of $10,000 is being invested. So is that present value or is that what is gonna be later? Well, it says it's being invested right now. So $10,000 is our P. Uh, R is an annual rate of 8%. So we write that as a decimal 0.08. Find the balance after five years, that's years, that's T for uh, time. And then for part A, it says subject to compounding quarterly. So that's four times a year, so N is four. So the only thing I don't know is A. A is what the value is gonna be in the future, which is what we were asked to find. So because we're trying to find the value in the future, I'm gonna use the first formula, A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT. So A equals 10,000 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.08 over N, which is 4, raised to the N, which is 4, times T, which is 5. Now we need to get out our calculator. Okay, so I am going to type in 10,000 times parentheses 1 plus 0.08 divided by 4 and end my parentheses. And then I'm going to use the raised to the key, which is the little caret key right there. And then I need to do 4 times 5. Now, because my caret is all the way up here in its in its own little uh, icon. I can do 4 times 5 and be really sure that I can see 4 times 5 up here. If your calculator just says like parentheses caret and then you say 4 times 5, you're going to need a parentheses around the 4 times the 5 if it's just all in one line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put those parentheses in mine as well because most calculators aren't quite as fancy as this and most of your calculators will, even if you're able to see it, is it gonna have need a parentheses there. So you should be getting 14859.47 uh, and that is going to be the future value of your $10,000 in five years if you keep all that money in there and every time it, in, it invests and if it's investing and in compounding quarterly, that's what you're going to end up with. Our next problem is very similar. We're going to use a lot of the same numbers. It's still five years. It still has a 8% interest. We're still starting with $10,000. We're still looking for what the value is going to be, except this time my N is gonna be 12. So we have A equals 10,000 again, parentheses one plus 0 0.08, which is our rate, divided by 12 this time, raised to the 12 times five. I would recommend putting parentheses around that so when you type it in the calculator, you'll remember them. So I have 10,000 in my calculator times parentheses 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12 this time. Raised to the, that's the little carrot button, parentheses 12 times 5 parentheses. Enter. 
So that gets me a future value of $14,898.45. And the 45, probably we can raise the, the 7, makes that 46. Although banks usually round to their advantage, they don't necessarily round to uh, the way we would round in math. They usually, whatever makes it best for them, that's usually what they do. Now, if you have a different type of calculator, you may need to type this in a little differently. If you have a calculator where you can't actually see your screen, the way you'd type this in is uh, essentially backwards. You could type 0 0.8 in the middle, divided by 12, and then hit enter then you'd have to add 1 and hit enter. And that would be all of the values of the inside of the parentheses. Then you're going to need to raise it to the 12 times 5, which is 60. You probably want to do that one. Just multiply it out before you type it in because uh, some calculators don't handle parentheses real well. So then you'd raise it to the 60 and you'd get that value. And then you'd multiply that value by $10,000 and you'd still get the same answer um, even if you don't have a line on your calculator screen that you can actually work with like let's say you're doing it on like an iPhone like on your iPhone just a science the regular scientific or um, four function calculator there that's how you'd have to do it you would type it from the inside out